to the law enforcement people all over the planet because every law enforcement officer does the same thing. He defends those who are too weak to defend themselves. He defends those that don't have a voice. And for every soldier who's defended his nation against intruders protecting their borders, we salute you, we appreciate you, and we invite you to join us in making this world the world that it's supposed to be. To from the crowd of the Advanced President Conference of May 24th, 2020, this is how we feel about you, the military and the law When we talked about all of the lies and the cover-ups and, you know, we've been locked up in our houses, how many people are dead in New York City that maybe could have been saved had hydroxychloroquine been used? How many people in Italy? How many people around the world? If there was a treatment that there was knowingly, people knowingly going out of their way to lie about the trials, these were just some of the discussions that were taking a place at really what I believe was the only conference held in the United States of America just two weeks ago. Of course, I'm talking about the Advanced Medicine Conference. I got involved with it because as it was being put together, Dr. Rashid Buttar, who is the founder of the Advanced Medicine Conference, said to me, Dell, they want to keep us all locked down, yet we have scientists and doctors and health professionals from all around the world that are supposed to be at this conference. They all know that nothing that's being said in mainstream media is true. So I want to have this conference, and I want to attempt to have it live. I do not want to go and do this, you know, via computer and, and do it from our basements because it will send the wrong message. It will send the message that we believe that this is real, that this lockdown should be happening. He said, instead, I want to have a conference in protest, in person. Will you show up? I said, you're damn right. I will be there. And I was, and this is just a taste of what that conference was like. The illusion of separation is the source of all conflict. We are one. Stop looking at this machine as being broken and start looking at this as you are the controller of an entire biological system and it will run the way you want it to run, but then you have to be very careful of your thoughts. I believe that with current medical knowledge, there's no reason for a person not to be able to live to the age of 120 and have the same quality of life as it did when they were in their 50s and 60s. We start doing things a little bit more. You start eliminating vaccines, start doing something, other things. You start exercising regularly. It, it can be even more than that. For years, people have been waking up. And it's scaring those who are afraid. This is the resistance. And it's just getting back to our freedoms and our liberties. We should be able to talk and bring all of our ideas together on the table, and we're being censored. We, we should be able to discuss anything in America, right? That's what sets our country apart. And, you know, to find out who's really ruling you, find out what you can't question. You can't question vaccines. We have been misprogrammed for the longest time. So we're always programmed as frail, vulnerable, weak, you know, open to disease and all that. It's a completely false statement. You're a creator. You are powerful. Don't forget your connection. Stay clear. Stay in the light. We win this. What am I going to do? Like, what can I do? We appreciate you, and we invite you to join us in making this world the world that it was supposed to be. Well, it's my honor to be able to sit down with the organizer, the founder of the Advanced Medicine Conference, Dr. Rashid Buttar. Hey, man. Hey, Dale. It's All good right. to see you again. Same here. I'll I mean, it's, uh, it was just, you know, just over two weeks ago. Yeah. We were in North Carolina. Yeah. 
I was in the airport heading over and, you know, I was getting texts that things are getting really crazy here, you know, and, and, and so a lot of events, and we've got this article written by Business Insider talking about how rules were broken. Now, I mean, one thing's for sure, we, I, I want to be clear that it, we weren't surprised, right, that there was no. going to be some sort of reaction, because I remember you had called me about, I would say it was about a month before the event. This is an event that we booked, you know, you, you had me involved in, I think, maybe almost the day after we did it last year. Right, exactly. Right? All right. And so, but a month ago you said, given all that's going on with COVID-19, and, you know, we don't know where North Carolina is going to be, but you told me, I really want to have anyone to be interested to still show up in person. We don't know what's Absolutely. going to happen. And you asked me, would I be interested in and I said, yeah, of course I would. Well, I think it was a little bit different because I said, you better be there. Okay, it was out of the work. <laughs> <laughs> but no, exactly, because we didn't know what was going to happen. But I thought it was very important from a statement, especially considering that's an advanced medicine conference. It's a statement coming from the medical profession, some of the leading mind in medicine, some of the leading, leading advocates in freedom of speech, freedom of uh, expression, freedom of choice. And so I wanted to make sure for the world, not just for our country, but for the world, that we would have an opportunity to make that statement. And the conference was a perfect venue to make that statement. And that's why it was important to me. Yeah, and you know, this is something that obviously now freedom of speech, the right to assembly is, is we're all watching uh, extreme um, discussions about that, let's say, and, and people reacting differently about it. Two weeks ago, we did not have what appears to be, you know, a very legitimate race conversation. But we were having a medical freedom conversation that was important. And, you know, there are doctors, and, and we'll get a little bit into this article, but there are doctors that say, you are putting people at risk. You as doctors and physicians were putting people at risk by showing up to a hotel you know, forcing your way to have a conference when really, you know, North Carolina was just beginning to uh, open up. What do you have to say to those detractors that are like, you know, that are saying, we have to have the people believe in us as physicians. And if we defy what either government dictates or governors, then, then what do we say about the profession? Well, first is, I would say that any doctors that said we put people at risk, I would want to know which mail order facility they bought their medical degree from. Okay. I would want to know that if anybody who says that we have to have the public have faith in us, then start doing your damn job so the public has faith in you. you there's no, I, don't, I don't have to worry about anybody having faith in me. My patients from 93 countries come to me, and, 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 and it's not, I'm not marketing to them. I'm not advertising to them. I don't worry about my faith. In fact, I'm more worried about that if they see me doing something, they're going to do the same thing because they think that it's the right thing to do. So when the medical profession starts speaking out like this, it shows that they have an issue with trying to invoke the, and instill confidence in their followers. That's their problem. That has nothing to do with me. My, the reason we had 256 people that attended that conference, despite sabotage in the hotel, telling people for 13 days prior to our event that the event had been canceled, not just not just people, attendees, but exhibitors from 15 different countries. You were there, Dell, so yeah. you saw these people. Yeah. Why did they come? Even though the night before, I was totally dejected and I had to put out a message and saying, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be there. You got to do what's right for you. I can't tell you in good consciousness to come because I don't know the hotel, whether you're going to even have a place to stay, leave alone, come to a conference. And still people came. People came. We would have had literally thousands of people. We didn't even announce the live stream till five days before the conference because I wanted people to be there. I didn't want people to yeah. stream it. But yeah. because so many people wanted to come, we had between people that said, definitely I'm going to be there. I want to be there. I'm just trying to work out the details or I want more information. That was 27,000 people wow. that had fit in that category. The fourth category was, I want to be there, but I don't think I'm going to be able to come, was another 40,000. We had 67,000 people that would have had interest in the streaming, and that's the reason we decided to stream it five days before. Little did we know that the hotel had been sabotaging the entire event, even to the point, you remember the ballroom that we had uh, contracted, yeah. which was for 940 people. They even divided it in half and gave us like a weird corner to do a live stream. It's like, we've paid for the whole room. Sure, you want to keep 10 people in there? That's fine. That's your choice. But don't divide the room and give us like a little corner to do our live stream. We, right. we, we have the whole room. So it was a complete sabotage from the get-go. They were trying to, you know, and I didn't know that. I didn't know the hotel who we'd contracted with and paid a lot of money to that they would be sabotaging the event themselves. 
So, you know, we'll, we'll get into the conference itself, but leading up to the conference, there was a lot of, you know, the, the numbers kept changing. Mm -hmm. You kept saying at first, they're saying I have to cut the audience in half. Right. Right, we got to go with half the audience. We can't do the 900. Going to have to keep it more like 400. Then, then it sounded, well, maybe more like 250, 300. And in all that time... Let me, let me give you the details. Okay, so please. Chronologically. Yeah, so, yeah. so basically, you know, they knew that we were, we had contracted and put down the deposit and, uh, and then another 25% by February 10th or something like that, before you and I saw each yeah. other and I spoke yeah. up. Okay, so that was in February. All through February, March, and April, and in the begin even in the beginning portion of May, there was no correspondence, no indication the hotel had any issues. They wanted to have the event. That's what we were told. Everything mm -hmm. was good. About six days before the event, we were told that we they wanted us to sign an addendum limiting our conference down to 50 people in each room from the 950 that we had contracted or okay. 920 whatever it was we said no we're not going to do that first i mean i looked at it I was like we can't do that went back and forth talked to uh, our legal counsel and he said we can't we don't sign that yeah. so then we set up a time to talk with them four days before the conference we had that conference call scheduled we got on the call and the manager the general manager as well as one of the owners representatives or the owners we're on the call, and they said, we don't think this is going to be a problem at all because all we wanted you to do, instead of limiting it to 50, just 50%. We'll, we'll be fine with 50%. And I was happy with 50%. I figured, you know, we didn't even know whether people could tra travel or not, so we figured, well, we'll go, we're going to go and live stream it. So 50%, which is 400 and whatever, we're, we're happy with it. All right, great. Let's talk about how then this gets reported. Advance Medicine Conference attracted about 200 non-conventional medicine practitioners, researchers, anti-vaccine advocates, and members of the public based on the best estimates of Business Insider. Very few attendees wore masks, and the group didn't comply with local guidelines to limit group gatherings to 10 people, leading to police enforcement so the article says essentially no one was wearing masks i would agree with that i don't well, said and, essentially most people right. i would say nobody was wearing i would masks. say that they said very few attendees they they gave us the benefit of the yeah, doubt we there. have zero i didn't see any masks right. anywhere but this idea that there was only 10 people that were supposed to be allowed so at a certain point there's you know i started getting texted images there's an altercation at the hotel um you know it's hard to tell at one point it looks like you're in some sort of confrontation with someone that works at the hotel um, and there was a lot of people standing in the street. What happened? So basically what happened was we agreed to the 50%. Yep. We were good to go yep. on, on, that Friday, on that Thursday. The governor's order came out right afterwards. And the governor's order opened up the state 50% capacity okay. to the restaurants and opened up churches. And I think that's what they anticipated the governor was going to do. So they said 50% is fine. Great. We were good with that. However, the governor's order also said for any meetings any conferences, it's not going to be opened up 50%. It's going to be reduced from 50 to 10. Each component of the order contradicted itself. Because the virus, as you know, it's very smart and knows not to go into churches right. and restaurants, but for meetings, it's going to go. go. Okay, yeah. so, um, and of course, now we know what it was about. It was a political issue because they even stated it, and now you know that the Republican National Convention has been pulled out. So they didn't want to set a precedence in North Carolina to right. open up a meeting. That's, that's what it appears to be. On... on so we, we had signed the addendum saying 50%, and nobody asked us to sign anything from that point onwards, right? Now, this is Friday morning. They call us, and I, I'm, I'm actually doing the London Real Live with 166 doctors, and that's when I got a note slipped underneath the door saying the hotel just pulled out. So now, to me, this is Friday. The conference starts Saturday. Right. Um, call the hotel. They said, no, we haven't pulled out. We don't know what you're talking about. We haven't pulled out, but, you know, we have to adhere to the social distancing rules and all that stuff. And I, I, at that point, we were already live streaming, so I was like, okay, as long as we got a place to live stream, we're good. And we didn't know how many people were showing up. Right. That night, I put out the notice to everybody, guys, I don't know what's going on. Um, I don't want you to have to come and be only one of 10 people or sit in. They said they'd give us all the conference rooms they had, but 10 people in each one. Okay. And we were like, you know, we, we don't know what that's going to be worth it for people. Right. You know, flying all the way from a different country or right. whatever the case yeah. is. So yeah. anyway, put that message out. Saturday morning comes up. I get a call from downstairs from some of the people. They're not letting us in. Some of my staff, they were preventing staff members from coming in. Okay. There was about 80 to 100 people outside. There was about 120 people inside the hotel already. And so I called 
the sergeant, the, de the, the main guy who's in charge, yeah. he arrived with a couple of other police officers. So you called the police, not as the, the article says the hotel called. Of course. Yeah, it, was, it was not only right. that we called the police, we knew the police officers and we had talked to them the night before. Right, right. <laughs> but it's, just, it's one lie upon a lie. The typical mainstream media. Right. Now, there was something unique that happened. At a certain point, you know, it still was, you know, now you have hundreds of people showing up, which now you have to be asking yourself, how am I going to divide, you know, how many rooms of 10 do I have here? But it didn't end up happening in any of the ballrooms at all. What, right. What ended up happening? Well, the altercation part that you were talking about that was with the hotel. And that, you know, we, I went back and apologized to him and shook his hand and everything was good. But what happened was at that point, the law enforcement knew clearly that we were in the right because we had the governor's orders, which, by the way, the governor's orders showed exceptions were to health, safety, and education. And we said, well, we're, this is a medical conference, so that falls in the health category, right. and it's educational. Right. So we fall under that category. We also had our contract in place, which showed that we had 50% capacity, and we didn't have 450 people there. So yeah. we were well within our capacity. Now, the law enforcement was also saying, you know, this is a civil matter, so we can't, we can't do anything. If the hotel doesn't want you on the property, then you have to leave. However, if you contracted with the hotel, that's up to the hotel now to take you to court because you have a contract in place. That's what right. the law enforcement is. And, and, of course, the manager was in a conundrum, yeah. right? Because we also had people inside the hotel right. that were, that were upset because right. they're waiting. So I told one of, my, uh, one of my staff, I said, get everybody that's in the hotel to start moving out because now they're going to have a serious problem. And so everybody was coming at the door, but now with the police and the security there, we had this, uh, it was like the parting of the seas, right? The, yeah. the, 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 the doorway was like the Red Sea. So you had people on either side. And then the police officer asked me as a favor, he said, could you ask everybody to move aside and let's go over and talk. So I did that because I had already talked to the police officer and he brought the manager over. And then the manager started to hem and haw and saying, you know, I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I said, look, we got a contract in place. You figure out the solution. And their, their suggestion was, well, the order only says for ballrooms. Um, is there anything else we can do? And I, my suggestion was the lobby, you have... 50 to 100 people in the lobby right now. There's nothing about the lobby. Why can't we do in the lobby? So he said, let me talk to the owners. He gets on back with the owners. He's talking. They're going back and forth. And they said, well, you know, what about audiovisual? I said, we'll bring it out. We'll do whatever. And he got off the phone. And he said, the owner says, that's fine. Let them do whatever they want to do in the, in the lobby area, but not in the ballrooms. I was like, I'm good. So instead of being sequestered off in a ballroom, this amazing event happens in the middle of the hotel, one of those that has the open... You know, atrium, the, the, yep. atrium that's like, I don't know, 18, 20 floors. God shining so his light. just <laughs> booming for two straight days, you know, brilliant. Uh, you know, Judy Mikevitz gave it a...